So hello guys and welcome to another video of Code Rhetoric with Tam Talk. I am your coach as well as your code instructor Tam, Tam Talk. So on today's video we will be discussing medical coding relationships, right? So when I sent the promo, you probably thought I was talking about something real personal, personal like okay I was proposed to and I accepted the engagement, but no, I mean anyway we'll invest in another subject for another video but on today's video we are discussing relationships but not that again not that type of relationship we're actually going to be talking about relationships as in how does medical coding fit into the healthcare industry or the healthcare revenue cycle so for those of you who are already in the medical coding industry you're working in the in in the industry or you may be another part of the revenue cycle. So you're very familiar or very well aware of how the healthcare revenue cycle works. But for those of you who are new to coding, your medical coding students, uh, hey, this is for you. And so I'm gonna go ahead and say I am recording from my phone. So you may see me looking all over, trying to figure out exactly where the camera is located. So charge it to my vision and charge it to my phone, but here we go. So healthcare revenue cycle. So there's many parts of the healthcare revenue cycle. And again, as we progress into technology, the cycle is becoming more and more evoluted, if that's even a word. It is expanding as well as shrinking. And so what I mean by that is it is expanding because it is, again, incorporating technology and different automations and things that are uh, put in place uh, since the pandemic, but it is also shrinking. So what I mean by shrinking, again, it goes back to, again, technology uh, uh, being implemented or more so implemented into the healthcare industry. And so there are processes that are put in place to want to either kind of, I don't want to say to eliminate the healthcare revenue cycle, I mean, because like, who don't want like money, right? We're not trying to eliminate money. But anyway, but how we receive money and how to receive that money quicker. So that's what I mean by it's shrinking and then, of course, it's growing. So, yeah. So I will quickly walk through the revenue cycle process. And so the revenue cycle process actually starts when the patient makes a medical appointment. And so once they make that make, make contact with that particular provider, clinic, hospital, whatever, that is the beginning of the healthcare revenue cycle. So once the appointment has been made and the patient arrives for their appointment, then they, of course, encounter check-in. And so that is something that is being automated. And so once they proceed with check-in, your insurance verification, demographic information, all those things that are specific to that patient are verified and are, are actually inputted into the system. Okay, so once all of that has been taken care of, then the patient is makes their way to the, I'm going to say the back because I'm old school, you know, patient is going to the back to see the provider. So they may encounter, encounter the medical assistant or the nurse, the nurse or the nursing staff, uh, you know, for vitals, uh, review of systems check, and, you know, whatever it is that they need to, uh, the nurse or the medical assistant needs to complete prior to the patient actually seeing the healthcare provider or the physician. So once those items are performed or documented, then the doctor proceeds to see or evaluate the patient. You know, it goes through the, the examination, the history, the medical decision making, the plan, the treatment, so forth, whether that be um, uh, another follow-up appointment, uh, prescription management, uh, decision for surgery. So whatever the decisions are that are made per the doctor, that is part of that. So what happens after that part is this is where medical coding comes into play because the doctor has already, he's created the documentation, he's evaluated the patient. So now we need to get that information translated into medical codes. And so what happens is, and again, this is where, again, technology um, is coming in and we're getting into work cues. Again, for those of you who work in healthcare, you understand what I mean when I say work cues. So work cues 
I like little buckets of uh, sp designed specifically for coding. And so within a coding department or within the work queues, you may have uh, specific buckets, especially if it's like a multi-specialty group. You may have a bucket for like, uh, I'm going to say radiology, a bucket for internal medicine, a bucket for surgery. I'm just, you know, randomly saying it, but it's like little buckets, right? So if your patient was seen by a surgeon, it's, uh, and once the surgeon has evaluated the patient, diagnosed, treatment plan, and so, so forth, so forth, then the documentation for that particular encounter will drop in the general surgery bucket. And then so on with the next and so on and so on. So as a medical coder, we are assigned to a specific bucket, work queue or bucket. And so when we are assigned to like that general surgeon's bucket or general surgery bucket, we then have privy or access to that particular encounter, which by means is we have access to patient demographic. We also have access to what actually transpired during that encounter. Again, this is like words, literature, verbiage, vitals, all those things, right? So us as a coder, we would take that information and we would interpret it and translate it or in, translate it into medical codes, right? And so our medical code selection should be able to tell what transpired during that encounter with the uh, patient and the surgeon. Okay, so then once we have translated, we've inputted our codes and so forth, it, then it goes through the scrubber. The scrubber, again, is technology in, into healthcare, and it, it kind of scrubs, double checks, make sure coding is correct, what have you. Uh, checking for errors, and if everything goes well, then it goes out the door to the payer. Okay, so then the payer receives it, and I, I guess they do what they do. Um, they're going to submit payment, or they're going to say, oh, do not, based on whether the contract um, that was negotiated between the healthcare provider, the healthcare entity, and the insurance company, it could be for medical lack of medical necessity, uh, various reasons, whatever the reason is for denials. Then it the denial or the EOB or explanation of benefits is then returned to the healthcare entity. At this point, this is where it meets with the billing department. So the billing department, they are going through and they're looking at, they're either posting the payments or they're actually looking at the denial. And once, it, I'm going to say in our case, if it is a denial due to coding, Either the biller, maybe the biller has some coding experience, or maybe the biller is an actual coder, or if they don't, or whatever that particular entity's process is for handling coding denials, those uh, denials are rerouted back to the coding department in a denial coding work queue, right, for the coding team to review and correct. And so that is our relationships with the billing department. Okay, so the billing department actually comes in on the end, on, 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 I can say, after the coding department. And then once the coding department resolves that coding issue, it then they may reroute it back to the billing department to review, and the billing department will resubmit that particular claim to the insurance company. And then it goes back to the insurance company. The insurance company then makes the, uh, you know, decision to pay or what, however the outcome will be. And so... Pretty much that is a quick rundown of the healthcare revenue cycle. So again, the medical coding, um, the relationship that it has is again, is they're coming in right after the encounter, the patient encounter with the provider, and they're translating or that information or the clinical encounter into codes, and those codes are then submitted um, out to the insurance company. So Billing. I did briefly mention that um, uh, sometimes uh, a biller can have a medical coding credential, and this is true. This is true. Medical coders can work in other capacities as well. Some of them are auditors. Some of them work in compliance or corporate compliance. Some of them work in things that may not even be specific to the business of healthcare. Some of the uh, coders could be nurses. Some of them could be doctors I, I i've known doctors to become to be coders as well so they have a, a a knowledge of medical coding and so medical coding again 
ties into technology because again, technology is increasingly becoming involved in healthcare. Medical coding is has to do with healthcare. Duh, diagnosis, procedure services, all those things, drugs, again, medical coding. So um then we're doing dealing with the business side of it. We're dealing with like the financial side of it. Although we're not specifically dealing with the financial side, but what we code or our code selections does determine, um, has a, a determination or a plays a, a major part in how a claim is reimbursed or whether or not it was denied. So we play a big part in this whole healthcare revenue cycle. Yes, a doctor may be a coder, but that is not his primary role to assign codes. This is why they have coders. Um, again, a biller, that is not their primary role to assign codes. However, you know, if the, the entity, if that is the entity's process for it to go back to the coding department, then so be it. Um, and here's the reason why it should co go back to the coding department to be reviewed. Because although the biller may be a coder, the biller is not a coder. Let me repeat that. Although the biller is a coder, the biller is not a coder. And you may say, well, Tam, what do you mean they're not a coder? So that is not their role in that particular uh, entity. That's not their role in that capacity. And that because they are not a coder per se, although they are looking at codes and they're looking at um, reimbursements and denials, they are not a coder. Another reason, another good reason why it should come back to the coding department is because what if it's an ongoing issue? What if it's an ongoing miscoding issue? issue right this is an opportunity for education especially if it's, it's the same diagnosis or the same cpt or hicks picks issue uh, with the same insurance company and it could be with the same coder and this is a mistake perhaps the policy excuse me or the guidelines had changed since the last time that you know well you know we I, and i'll be honest there are times when I, you know, once I learn a policy or a procedure uh, for a particular uh, service, I'm going to go with it because it's, it's second nature to me. I can do it with my eyes closed. Not that I will do it with my eyes closed. It's just, it all looks the same. The insurance company or the policy may have changed, but I am still coding it based on the last time I reviewed the policy. Up, uh, that is a denial issue. Okay, I've sent out 10 incorrect encounters right code and coding encounters so that is an opportunity for education that is an opportunity for education for the coder um to also uh, and also a pause for them to again to go back and learn the new policy um it could be um it may not even be an issue with the, the medical coding department it just may be you know a system error right again technology is in healthcare. So, yes, so medical coding, again, the relationships that we have, although we is not talked about a lot, um, our role is a major or very important role within the health queue, health, health queue, health care revenue cycle, cycle, <laughs> cycle management, excuse me. So, yes. So, again, I am not talking about the, those type of relationship, the other type of relationship, but I am talking about. The relationship or the importance of the role of a medical coder. So for those of you who's like, well, I want to do what's the difference between billing and coding. I'll briefly talk about it, but I'll probably upload another video providing a little bit more insight on the differentiations between a biller and a coder. But again, as I stated, the coder is the person that interprets the information or the uh, patient doctor encounter into codes. And then it goes to the insurance company and then uh, when it comes back from the insurance company, the billing department uh, goes back to the billing department. And the billing department is the one that applies the payment to the patient account. They look at the denials. If they can resolve them, they will. Again, but more likely, if it is a coding issue, it will automatically come back to the coding department to review and correct. So, yes. So, that's all that I have for today And I, uh, in regards to... Medical coding relationships. If you have any other ideas or any other questions, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below. 
or you always hit me up on email and I will also leave that in the link. And don't forget to like and hit the bell notification. Really not the bell notification, but you know what I mean. Hit the subscribe button. The subscribe button, child. The subscribe button. So, yes. That's all I have. All right.